you should take all of them, of course, and keep the ones that are important. I, did, I didn't spend the time to completely finish it. But let's uh, dwell on the confidence and prediction intervals. Because this is, uh, of course, also important. But the, the thing is, we don't ask you. That's a, basically, we ask you to do it in R, right? First of all, I told you that we can find the coefficients. R spits out the coefficients to us, right? I do not ask you to do that manually or by hand. Now, I didn't give you explicit formulas for that. I don't give you explicit formulas for these ones. The standard errors of the different coefficients. We do show you in the notes, I didn't bring the formulas because it's, it's just in a way showing you, that if we combine those standard errors, so I don't give you the formulas for how to compute those standard errors. You don't find them in the matrix section, which is not syllabus, you can find it. But otherwise, I don't give them to you, and you are then, of course, not expected to be able to use this formula that I don't give you. But I'm telling you that you can read off the standard error, and I expect you to know what a standard error is, generally. Like last time, it's the same interpretation, the statistical uncertainty of the individual B test, right? Having that standard error, you can combine it with a T percentile to produce a confidence interval for the different Bs. That, I tell you, in the notes. I didn't bring that uh, formula either, but it's part of what... So, you can construct a confidence interval just like we did last time. But you have to read off the standard errors from the R output. You don't compute it yourself, right? So that's the way it goes. We can... and which means we can do hypothesis testing and confidence intervals for the Bs, or the beta hats, or the betas, just like in the Simple regression case, we just read them off here. And we then can also do what I'm about to do now. Per confidence intervals for the, not the line, but the plane, and prediction intervals, as we discussed last time. And uh, the way you do it is basically for in R by using an inbuilt predict function. Now here's a bit of confusion maybe. We use, in a way, the word predict in R syntax is used, as I do also in my slide, to find y i hat, right? The predicted in of a model, that is the model values, the line values, or the plane values. Plug in the x's and get the values. Now, so I use the predict function both for the confidence intervals and for the prediction intervals. Because predict just gives me the values of the model, and then I just need to choose what kind of interval do I need for the purpose I'm facing. Do I need the confidence interval? I write interval equal confidence. Do I need the prediction interval? I write interval equal prediction. I also show you that these ones can be be found from the standard errors. But I also I skipped some of these formula now for this uh, this slide to also because it's more of an applicational thing now the way we treat MLR and not going into the detail. I'm not asking you to do all the formula detail. And then the rest of this is just R stuff to actually plot them. Let's see.
curve of the Danish hair. And I think you get the picture. I have plotted the, not the world's greatest plot, I admit that. Um, I've plotted the curvilinear relation between coming from my model, that's the black one. I've plotted the red one, that's the confidence bands. And I've plotted the green ones, that's the prediction bands. You can see Danish and English are very alike here. Um, so, I mean, how to do the technical R thing, that's not for the lecture situation to dig into the details. You can find the R code to actually do it, right? Um, so, we can do it by R. That's the short message. We can do confidence and prediction intervals by R. And also confidence and hypothesis test on the coefficients by looking into R. And there is a little more detail given in the notes. Remember that. So always read. Then I have found the time to include on my slides here. But without getting the basic, really basic formulas. But a little more details on, on plugging, taking out the information from the R and combining into these things. Right? And so we have one more thing left. And I have one. I have also 